Welcome, dear friends, to Kardec Radio here at 11 p.m., nourishing our souls with one more Immortal Messages. Immortal Messages, as you know, is this program based on the book Psychophonic Instructions. And the book Psychophonic Instructions is a compilation of uh, spoken messages through Chico Xavier in a mediumistic meeting at the end of a disobsession rescue work, right? In this meeting, several spirits from all backgrounds came often to help, to assist, and also to share messages that are supposed to stay with us for many, many centuries. Those messages came through Chico Xavier to reach you and I. Yes, and today, a most special one. A most special one that talks about remembering Ella Kardec. We're at Kardec Radio after all, right? So today we're going to dedicate ourselves to remembering Ellen Kardec. Yes, remembering Ellen Kardec is this message that is going to bring us a unique awareness, I would say. Because many people say, I'm a spiritist. They've never read a spiritist book or Ellen Kardec's books. And if you want to recall, today we're going to recall, being a spiritist is about inner transformation, but it's about knowing the science of the spirits. So if you haven't read Kardec's books, we're missing the foundation. Like any science, we need a foundation. He began his works in France by publishing the book, the Spirit's Book, in, on April 18th, 1857. And then later, the next year, he begins the Spiritist magazine, the Review Spirit, and the Spiritist Society of Paris, the Parisian Study Society of St Studies, right, in Paris. And then later, he's going to publish the medium's book in 1861. After the medium's book, he publishes the gospel according to Spiritism in 1864. The book Heaven and Hell comes in 1865. The book Genesis in 1868. And of course, he wrote so many articles so many things for us to learn, to make us learn about spiritism. It's not only for the time, because what he says is immortalized, like gravity. Gravity exists, period. We continue developing, understanding more the implications of it, like NASA, when they go to space, they keep studying how growth happens without gravity, comparing to growth within gravity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the science of the spirits continues to expand, but it begins with Kardec. But who is Leopoldo Cerny? I wanna share with you who he is. You're seeing his picture here. He was born in Paraíba. Yes, he is from the Northeast of Brazil. He was born in 1870. And he came to live in, the, in Rio de Janeiro. Once in Rio de Janeiro, he lived there all his life until the end of his life when he discarnated in 1941. Just to give you a reference, the book Good News was psychographed, published in 1940. So Leopoldo Cirne is one of these first waves of spiritists in Brazil. And he did many good things. He became a spiritist when he was 24 years old. He became acquainted with the books. He never stopped. He dedicated himself so much to studying it that one day, of course, he was asked to embrace the organizational aspects of spiritism and its study. Remember, in Brazil, at that time, 
the end of the 20th, the 19th century, in the first decades of the 20th century, spiritism was ostracized, outcast, put aside. Leopoldo Cirini was one of these waves of brave spiritists who faced the odds and really solidified. He was the one that organized the first, the first spiritist meeting, Congress in Brazil in 1904. And they had 2000 people back then at that meeting. He was also one of the people, mainly the person who created systematic studies on mediumship for people to study Kardec's works. He was the one, he also became president of the Brazilian Spiritist Federation, and he became one of the voice telling people the importance of studying Kardec. He created systematic studies. So Leopoldo Cirini has a different mind. And you'll see in the book we studied years ago that you can find on our YouTube channel, I came back. In Portuguese, it's named Volte. Brother Jacob is the author. Chico Xavier is the medium. In that book, there is a passage that after Brother Jacob discarnates as a spiritist, he goes to the spiritual realm. Dr. Bezerra de Menezes helps him out and then bring him, brings him to a meeting in the spiritual realm. When he is in the spiritual realm, one of the people whom he finds is Leopoldo Cirini. Leopoldo Cirini was so committed, so truthful to it, that there was a point he was so, uh, how do I say it, frustrated with people distorting things, that he distanced himself from this political administrative aspects, started writing books to the point that he wrote a book that is very critical. Nobody knows it, but if you know Portuguese, because it's not in English yet, there is a book that he wrote and you can find a PDF online. It's a book that talks, it's titled The Antichrist, The Lord of the World, and it says here, and I'll read to you, spiritism in its fallacy. The Christ work, the Christian work, and the power of darkness. This is how lucid he was. This is how lucid he was. And there is a moment, a particular chapter that I have here in front of me. This is written in 1935, 1935, and he's saying here, he's talking back about Kardec, how hard it was for Kardec, how many people were creating obstacles. And he says here, one of the characteristics of the spirit of darkness is tenacity. Once they try some techniques, they change the tactics. And during Alain Kardec's existence, several attempts by the forces of darkness were frustrated. They tried to make Kardec be discouraged. They tried to make him succumb to the pressure of obstacles. And they tried to make him abandon the magnificent task Yes, it happened to Kardec, and he never gave up. But on the other hand, he suffered a deception to see transformed the efficient ways of disseminating it all. And when we have on October 9th, the Barcelona Act, burning the books, it was the opposite reaction happening, called the attention of many people. 
In this book, he's going to talk about how many people don't take it seriously. They abuse the spiritist things. They may charge for what they do. They may, it's about the not taking it seriously, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just giving you a few things. I'm not going to go into this today because he has a message to tell us. But it's a teaser for you. And if this happened to Kardec, rest assured, it happens to you, it happens to me. And I've seen with my own eyes people who are excellent, true potential, and they stop. Because the forces of darkness are so skillful. As he says, tenacity. They keep finding different strategies to deviate us and make us stop. And then we are few who are overloaded with work because we feel like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm not going to get myself in trouble. But it's not about getting yourself in trouble. It's about fulfilling your commitment. Before we read this message, we need to remember that before you and I reincarnated, there was a reincarnatory plan. And we didn't reincarnate to be on a vacation. I know now, because of the lockdowns, the coronavirus, people are like, oh, I, I want a vacation. I want to get out of here. We need to start dreaming of something a little more sublime. Because the moment we stop dreaming about vacation and start dreaming about working for the general good, the world's going to change. And then you and I reincarnated because we were repentant of 10,000 things that we've done and wasn't beautiful. And we asked for 10,000 illnesses, restrictions, constrictions, and the on high said, no, you're not going to be born this and that way, here and there. No, you're going to be given a healthy body. You're going to be given resources. You're going to be given intelligence. You're going to be given this. Well, you're going to be a spiritist. And you're going to repair the mistakes. By doing the good, by being patient and by being tolerant in a group, by learning to work in teamwork, because we've been working solo for so many lives. Now we need to learn to work in teams. And it's time consuming, labor intensive, and especially labor of the heart, because we need to forgive, understand forget, we need to be in solidarity, especially to those who have 10,000 tasks, less demanding, and become more mature, less childish, and repair the mistakes of the past. But do we do this? The minute we encounter an obstacle, I'm out of here. I'm not going to be in this group anymore. I am going to do this. Oh, it's too much work. It's far away. Blah, blah, blah. Well, missing the boat. Kardec had a task that was far superior than ours, much more difficult, way sacrificial. And that's why tonight, Leopoldo Cirni comes to us. So you and I can recall the apostle, Alan Kardec. It was a night on March 31st, 1955, 65 years ago. March 31st, 1869, was when Ellen Kardec discarnated a hundred, right? 
in 51 years ago. That's the night when we celebrate Kordek's discarnation and the completion of his mission in that life. On that glorious evening, Leopoldo Cirni, as Arnaldo Rocha says, the great champion of spiritism in Brazil, who with fervent enthusiasm extolled the immortal figure of the codifier of spiritism. Recalling Alan Kardec, Leopoldo Cirni invites all of us who are part of the spiritist community to the methodical study Kardec's books, which synthesize the script of eternal truth. truth. So if your spirit is in your reading 10,000 other books that are far away from the foundation, think twice, because we need to go back. Many people in Brazil keep asking me, Vanessa, have you read this recent book that are published? I say, you know, I don't have time. I don't have time. We're studying Kardec's. Leon Denis, Chico Xavier's books, and we don't have time for extra. Why? Because we're not only reading, we're studying and translating. And I would say that's the foundation. If we're reading something beyond it, we need to make sure that we go back to the foundation. It's like science. As a scientist, I say, any student who comes to any science, they need to know the foundation and then build it up. Or they won't understand. And it's not only about knowledge, it's about ourselves. The Spirit's book, in its fourth part, talks about hopes and solaces. If you want to console your heart, go there. Because that part and also, the moral laws were the ones that helped us understand the divine wisdom and love in our lives. By studying that, we start understanding more of ourselves and why life is happening in this and that way. It's very consoling, right? I see you guys, wonderful friends here joining us today. It's a beautiful evening in which we are truly embracing these teachings of spiritism. And he begins, Leopoldo Cirni. Think about him. You have his picture out right here. Think about him through Chico Xavier, coming to them and to you and to me and saying, my friends, May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with us. Celebrating today the Spiritist Collectivity, the anniversary of the discarnation of Allan Kardec, it will be fair to raise a thought of affection and gratitude in honor of the codifier of our doctrine, whose apostolate reconnected us to simple and pure Christianity unveiling broad paths to the progress of humanity. So he's saying it's not a mere tribute. It's really contextualizing. Because what does spiritism bring to us? The purity of the good news. You are an immortal soul. God created you to progress always and to become happy as you progress, but didn't create us alone. We are always surrounded by spirit companions who are more advanced than us and are always helping us move forward. And we keep learning all these beautiful things, thanks to the efforts, to the dedication, to the devotion of Alan Kardec. Kardec is the one, watch the movie, go to Netflix, 
or just Google Alan Kardec the movie and watch the movie. The movie is just a glimpse, but it's so beautiful. So beautiful. I know many of you have already watched. Why not watch it again? Watch it. And where is your thought in gratitude? What if it were you? What if you were Kardec? He doesn't expect anything from us. But what if you were Kardec? You know, when you look at your children and you feel like, man, sleepless nights, everything, and they are ungrateful, it hurts. I don't think Kardec's going to be hurt if we're not grateful. No. But how can we not stop for a moment and be grateful? We are at Kardec Radio. It's Kardec Radio. Thanks to Kardec, we have this radio here that unites us. I know you, thanks to Kardec. And I've become, you know, close to you. Thanks to Kardec. Were it not for Kardec, we wouldn't be here. And of course, before Kardec, there is the master, master Jesus. So he says a little bit more. He says, recollecting his memory, we reflect not only on the renewing desire that his work represents in the disintegration of dogmatic cysts that had formed in the world, by the affirmative absurdities of religion and negative absurdities of science, but also in the light of hope that Kardec's ministry has been constituting for almost, for more than a century now, for millions of souls who wandered lost, in the darkness of materialism, between discouragement and despair. So he's saying that Kardec's works came and disintegrated, dissolved dogmas by religion. Because now we are reasoning our faith but also disintegrating the absurdities of science that keeps negating things without a proof. When you find anybody saying, oh, can't believe you believe in these things. It's not scientific. I remember a student of mine I've always had respectful students at university because I never crossed a line. They always respected me too. But one day, I will remember I was asked this question very respectfully. I knew that this girl wanted to know more. She came to me and said, Dr. Ancelone, she was Jewish. Dr. Saloni, what do you think of people who believe that there is life after death? I never discussed these things there because it's not a subject of science, material science. I looked at her and I knew where she wanted to come from. She wanted me to disclose, but of course that's not the environment and I knew she didn't mean it well. So I said, well, I think it's scientific to contemplate the hypothesis that there is life after death. And then we kept talking and I said, you know, science has never proved that there is nothing in the afterlife. Science has never proved that God doesn't exist. Science has never proved that spirits don't exist. That means that it is very scientific to contemplate, to say the least, 
the hypothesis that these are things that exist. Science can't say anything. They can't say no. They can't say yes. Period. So Kardec was masterful because he was courageous enough to step in investigating things in a very scientific way. Things that many people kept denying just because of their prejudices. Prejudices. Because it's not scientific not to think about that possibility. Kardec was very courageous and brilliant, genius. As in one of Kardec Radio's interviews that we used to do, and it's still there, you can go to SoundCloud at Kardec Radio, and there is a playlist named Health and Spirituality. More than 230 interviews we've done in the past, and you're going to find interview, and a specific interview with um, Dr. Jeffrey Radiger when he said live at Kardec Radio, and it's recorded, it said, Kardec was a genius. Well, I knew it all along. That doesn't make me be convinced about it, but when I hear it from somebody who is not a spiritist and has been investigating and reading these books, it really makes me think that it's ever more evident that the day will come when we are going to glorify the works of Alan Kardec. And if you are a spiritist, which we're a minority on earth, and you are brave as Kardec to do your share, there will be a day in which we will look back and say, I remember how hard it was to build this up. We're repairing mistakes that we created in the past. Who created these dogmas of the church? Who created this, as he says here, negative absurdities of science? We did in the past. And that's why you and I are here today. Because we have to fix it up. We're the ones who put those obstacles there. And now we're here making efforts to get rid of them one by one, one by one. And we have not only to be courageous, but mostly to be responsible. And he says, and he also brought the light of hope. Kardec brought the light of hope that his ministry has been constituting for almost more than a century for all of us. Does the, do the teachings bring you hope? The light of hope. Thanks to Kardec. Spiritism marches victoriously on earth. And it's so true. This was 65 years ago. Kardec Radio didn't exist back then. Spiritism in English was inexistent in this world. And look where we are now. Is spiritism winning grounds over the world? Grounds inside of our hearts, right? Thank you so much for Kardec Radio Steam. There is here, it's here. The playlist of SoundCloud is here in our Facebook link. Click there and you'll be able to listen to many interviews. Spiritism marches victoriously on earth, drawing evolutionary norms and thus collaborating in the edification of the new world inside of us first because we're no longer discouraged, no longer despaired, right? In despair. And look, and however, in the exalted achievements with which it happens, particularly in Brazil, 
It is imperative not to forget the apostle who often, between hostility and misunderstanding, struggle and sacrifice. He was faithful to his magnanimous destiny. You think it was easy for Kardec? No, not at all. It was hard. He was persecuted. He was misunderstood. He was, he was facing the dogmatism of the church and of science at a time when things were way worse than they are nowadays. It's a breeze nowadays. We can do programs like this, right in front of social media all over the world. Kardec wouldn't be able to do this back then. Yeah. But he was brave. How dare us say, oh, it's so hard. People don't understand me. They think I'm crazy. And how do you think it's going to change? How do you think it's going to change? Somebody has to sacrifice. And you think, if we go through this, we have no part in that. If we're facing discrimination, we've created it in the past. Mm -hmm. And now we have to work hard and go past these obstacles for our own sake. He says, saluting Kardec's venerable mission, we ask permission to suggest through you to all the cultivators of the ideal located in our multiple doctrine, doctrinal regiments, the creation of study centers of the basic lessons of Kardec's codification. With the use of the most enthusiastic companions, sincere and responsible in our liberating movement, so that tumultuous activities, whether in the composition of proselytizing or in the relief of popular needs do not muffle down the clear and guiding voice of the principle. It's important to help the poor. It's important to share these teachings, but more important than that is for us to study amongst ourselves study groups. Nowadays, there is no excuse, no excuse, no excuse, because we have the internet. Oh, in my city, there is nobody. I'll tell you this. When I was in Baltimore, 22 years ago, when I arrived in Baltimore, 1998, there was no spiritist group there. And I remember I missed it so much. Months later, I've come to know that there was a group in Rockville, which was like 25 miles south from me. I didn't have a car, but I rented a car. And I went there twice. It was summertime and I came to know the coordinator of the meeting, George Godinho Neri, who is nowadays the president of the Brazilian Spiritist Federation. Back then he was um, in a diplomatic mission in the United States. And I remember the second week I said, I'm so sorry, I can no longer come here every week because I don't have a car. I was a postdoc. I didn't have money to buy a car or anything. So I said, you know, can you guys come to Baltimore and help us there? And I had no intention of forming anything. I was sincerely and selfishly thinking of me, saying, oh my gosh, I need a group. But that's self-love, actually. And they turned to me and said, sure, are there other spiritists there? And I knew nobody who was a spiritist there because I was there just to be a scientist at the University of Maryland. And they said, I scratched my head and I said, think, think, think. I said, don't worry, I'm going to find out. So I got their number. 
and I got to know of a list of spiritists of Brazil, of Brazilians. I don't remember the list, a list. And I saw their address and started calling them. People wouldn't pick up calling and saying, Saturday, October 19th, we're gonna start this meeting at this address. If you're interested, come. Da -da -de -da 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 -da. And then three people came. It was me, the couple, and three new people who came. From there on, in three months, we had 30 people. And the spirit is side of Baltimore. is still there, 22 years later. That's it. That's how it begins. You have to do what you have to do. And it's not complicated. It takes effort. But we have to do it. We have to study. And that's what we did. We started studying systematically the teachings of Ellen Kardec. No rush for years we were studying the teachings of Alan Kardec. We were not in a rush to be a full force center. We were just there praying religiously that day, studying, going home, studying, going home until we started expanding other types of meetings, outreach activities, etc. Like any plant, we need to respect the gradual growth. But I don't think people have patience, right? They want to start a center with all the meetings, with all the specialties, and they say, but we don't have anybody who has been a spiritist. In Baltimore, nobody was a spiritist. They were all new. They became spiritists. And in Virginia, the thing wasn't different. In Washington, D.C., it wasn't any different. But we need to study, especially Kardec's works. And he says, at a distance of 86 kilometers beyond the origin, the source will inevitably be contaminated by foreign elements aggregated its moving body. Therefore, let's not neglect the crystalline stream of the spring of our guidelines, instituting courses of analysis and meditation on Kardec's books for the learners of goodwill. So he's giving us an analogy. If you take spring water 86 kilometers afar, that water is going to be contaminated by other elements. So we need to be close to the origin. Close. Kardec is our foundation. Read it, study it. Read it, study it. Read it and study it. Time and again, time and again, time and again. And he says, let us study and work. Meaning being useful. Love and instruct ourselves to improve ourselves and to elevate the life that agitates sovereign life next to us. The glorious work of the codifier that the, glorif that the codifier has brought us as sacred goal, the recovery of love and wisdom, brotherhood and justice, order and work amongst humanity, <clears throat> the glorious work of the codifier has brought as a sacred goal the recovery of love and wisdom, brotherhood and justice, order and work amongst humanity for the redemption of the world. Let us not forget then the saving light and by lighting it in your own spirit, let us repeatedly say, Hail Alan Kardec. And this is really to appreciate his immense work, the work that comes to us and gives us the foundation. Kardec was the one that coined the term medium. 
mediumship and everything. He is the one that was the first one to bring science and religion and put it all together and say, there is no contradiction. Read the gospel according to spiritism. And you're going to see that it's possible to have a scientific mind and an open heart to love our neighbor as well. Kardec is revolutionary in a peaceful way. He's the revolutionary of the third millennium. Yes. And we are being invited tonight to study more. Alan Kardec. At Kardec Radio, we have some of the books already in audiobooks. The Spirit Book is completely there, available to us. The Spirit Book. John DeRose and Steve Shepard spent three years recording the 1019 questions and answers plus the introduction and the conclusion. And it's all there available to you in our podcast list at SoundCloud, Spotify, etc. You can find it there. Also, we have the Heaven and Hell book, at least the cases of the second part, all recorded, 54 voices. And you can decide the cases you want to listen to, the dialogues between Kardec and the spirits. We have the gospel according to spiritism done by Luis Sergio Morota. Mm -hmm. And every Saturday, Carol Correa at 6.15 p.m. Eastern Time is helping us understand the third part of the Spirit's book by Kardec, which is about the laws of God, the divine laws, the moral laws. And then on Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, our dear sunshine is studying the very cases about the Heaven and Hell book, which is phenomenal. And then Brian Foster has been bringing studies on the gospel according to spiritism also on Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Teresa Castro is right. He coined so many new terms, even the word spiritist, spiritism is the one that created it all. Terry spirit, right? Because it's a new science. It needs technical terms. But besides the technicalities, as Leopoldo Cini says, it's about the light of hope. So I'm going to share with you a homework for you and I, an exercise. Do you want some exercise? Because these teachings are beautiful, but we need to bring them to the heart. As Jesus said to Nicodemus, we can't forget to, to feel the scripture. So here's the exercise. Since Leopoldo Cirini said that Kardec brought spiritism as the light of hope, go to Kardec's books. Find one piece of information that really lights up the hope in your heart. Think about it and pray in gratitude to Kardec. Go to one of Kardec's books. Find one piece of information that he shares that lights up that light of hope in your heart. Stop, meditate, raise our thoughts to Kardec and say thank you. Thank you for bringing to us this illumination, our lives will never be the same. All right. Now we're going to invite you to pray. Pray because right now there are so many people who need help. And that's one thing that we learn in spiritism. To be of service in prayer. We no longer ask other people to pray. We pray together and we know the power of this collective prayer. Let us pray together right now. I'm going to put some music so we feel more this beauty of the message, the light of hope. 
Okay. Let me turn it on here for you and me. One second, one second, friends. Everything I did. Okay, hold on a sec. Let's pray for those who are suffering the most and for people to never give up on these ideals. Look at Leopold Sim. We're gonna thank him too. He is this brave champion, as Arnaldo Rocha says, champion of spiritism in Brazil. These are Arnaldo Rocha's words, not mine. Let us pray. In gratitude. Visualizing. Our deck. In front of us. Thank you, Master Jesus, for sending Alan Kardec, Amelie Boudet, and the team of two realms who worked to bring us these liberating teachings. They light up the kingdom of hope inside of us. Hail Christ, hail Alan Kardec, and thank you, dear Mr. Leopoldo Sini, for your integrity, for your coherence, for your dedication, and for your recommendation tonight. We will study Kardec more. We will dedicate ourselves and we will open our minds to be ever more vibrant to these liberating teachings. So we can fulfill our commitment to share with others because everyone has the right to get to know of it. We can't keep it to ourselves alone. That would be selfish. We can no longer do that. Please make us strong so we do not feel, and especially that we share it in its purity without distortions. Tonight, we dedicate this prayer to those who are suffering the most on earth, whether incarnated or discarnated. To those who are in despair, 
because of the conditions of the earth. We wanna dedicate from our own vitality elements that may compose healing baskets potentiated by your healing love and brought to those who are in greater need than ourselves. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you for your protection, for your guidance, and for the healing you bring to us as well. And so be it. So friends, in this moment of reflash, reflection here, let us go back to the source as the exercise says. Find one piece of information in Kardec's books that may light up the hope inside of our hearts and reflect on it and raise our thoughts in gratitude to the codifier without whom we wouldn't be here. Thank you so much for being here with us. Yes, I agree, Nina De Rosa. You're right. Whoa. Yes, is there a small bit of Kardec's books that doesn't light up our heart? Is it? I agree with you. Everything. But just meditating on one, right? What a joy to be here with all of you. Very thankful to Kardec that united us all. I know, big hug to you, John and Nina, super hug. And let us meditate on this, Pedro Soares, Mark Carlos, Cristina Carvalho, Gabriel Inácio, Donna Pennison, thank you friends, Sil Bram, and Angelita, Chris, Donna Verducci, Ana Luisa, Lara Liboni, Ela Montanari, Carol Correa, thank you, friends, Gabriel Inácio, Lu, Nicoliello, thank you, Rafael Medeiros, thank you, thank you, Fabi, thank you, Daisy, Sol Souza, Nora Brasil, Narciso, Ena, thank you, Hipólito, thank you, Sunshine, thank you so much, friends, if I missed any of you, a big hug to you, if you're listening to this on demand, don't forget, let us remember Alan Kardec. That's our exercise of the night. Immortal messages to console us today and always. A big hug to you. And God willing, we will be back here at Kardec Radio tomorrow at 11 p.m. Nourishing our souls. Always. <laughs>